We on? We're live? Yeah. Good morning. Thanks for watching, showing up, streaming the Sylvia Findings Wednesday morning live stream that we do every week at 10.30 Pacific time. Um, somebody was asking me why, you know, if we're doing these kind of things live stream, what do we do on it? You know, why do we do it? Um, so... I know you've probably heard it before if you've tuned in other times, but uh, uh, just going to talk about why we're doing these live streams. Obviously, uh, lots and lots more people are starting to come online to do these kind of things, to bring the business to their customers. You know, we used to do a lot of shows, 24, 25 shows a year or something like that, practically every other weekend, uh, at least. Uh, some months obviously busier than others. Um, you know, so it was great. We could always see our customers, you know, in the uh, Greater Vancouver area, the Lower Mainland, further, f you know, flung all the way to, you know, Alberta, and you know, we did some shows in Ontario and Quebec. No, not Quebec. Uh, Ontario, we did some bunch of shows in Ontario. I guess far east as uh, Ottawa, I think, was the uh, furthest yeah, east Ottawa, we got. Ottawa, London. Yeah. Ottawa and London. Um, hopefully, when this all starts up again. Um, you know, uh, promoters will be looking for companies that are still in business, and hopefully we'll be one of them, and maybe we can get it to some of those shows further east in Montreal, and uh, uh, who knows. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we can always see customers get uh, kind of our finger on the uh, pulse of what they're looking for, what they're, uh, what they're enjoying, what, uh, you know, uh, how they're using the products, um, and that's great because we can always, you know, being connected to your customer base is one of the most important uh, things about running a business, uh, especially one that, you know, it's kind of a niche business. Let's be uh, frank, you know, we're not selling loaves of bread that everybody needs. Uh, we're selling something that a very small, you know, sliver of the population uses. So it's kind of important to uh, keep in touch with those people and, you um, uh, like that. So that's what we're doing. We're basically trying to recreate some of the uh, uh, contact that we had at shows, albeit digitally over things. Everything is this way now, right? Um, if you are working from home and you're having staff meetings, you're probably doing it over Zoom or something like this or you know, streaming. So uh, it, it's a new world. Marvel and I were just talking the other day and he said, uh, you know, the old ways of doing business are not gonna come back really you know uh, things things are, are different things are gonna change and you know I kind of have to agree with that um, so that's why we're doing these uh, things you know so we can you know keep in contact with you um, answer questions uh, although you can always email or uh, um, call us on the phone phones still work you know nobody uses their cell phones to actually speak to each other on their phones uh, even though that's kind of the primary uh, reason they were invented in the first place, um, although probably not now. That's a conversation for another <laughs> another time. Um, if you share this live stream with your friends or anybody, really, uh, I think we'll get a notification. We'll know, uh, and we'll send you one of these uh, polishing cloths. You know, right? These uh, beautiful uh, silver polishing cloths. Um, these are great, and I talk about them every month because this is something that every jeweler needs to have. I'm sure most of you guys have these. Um, these polishing cloths are, uh, you know, just a chamois material uh, infused with a chemical that helps unbind the copper and the oxygen uh, that forms on the surface of metal, especially on sterling silver or uh, gold that's not 18 karat or higher. 18 karat is less, you know, uh, uh, tarnishing, that, but it still does oxidize. Um, it's the copper in there, right? So yellow gold, if it's 18 karat gold, that means 18 parts gold, um, six parts something else, because it's a ratio of 24, right? 24 karat means pure gold. 18. Again, where am I going off on this tangent? Uh, not important. Sterling silver, 92.5% silver. The other 7.5% is usually copper. And um, pure silver, what they call fine silver, 999 silver, 
Uh, if you've ever worked with it, you've ever played with it, you ever you know wore it, you notice that it doesn't uh, oxidize as quickly. It's a lot more malleable, so it tends to dent and scratch a lot uh, easier than sterling does. Sterling is an alloy of 92.5% silver, 7.5% copper. Uh, and copper loves oxygen a lot more than silver does, so that's why sterling tarnishes more than uh, copper does and it's important to have those polishing cloths because that just uh, you know unbinds that gets to the surface um, and removes the cooper oxide off that um, so <laughs> just backing up just want to reiterate uh, please share and like or whatever you know you're doing with these things uh, if you have any questions or comments along the way please uh, you know go ahead and enter the, the chat and um, ask away um, I do have one question that came in over Etsy that I wanted to uh, address here because it segues nicely into something that I try to talk about every um, uh, session. Uh, somebody was asking, there was a pendant that they really liked the design of, um, and I think the setting was built for like a 12 by 14 stone oval or 12 by something like that, 12 by 15. Uh, but their stone was much bigger, you know, like 16 by 20 or something like that. And she wanted to know, uh, A, if it would fit in the setting, which it would not. Um, but B, if not, could we make one that did fit? And the answer, if the question is, can we make, the answer is almost always, yeah, of course, you know, we own the factory, we can do whatever we want. Um, custom work is something that we do a lot of, um, so, you know, and, and we do it, and I'm going to say this perfectly honestly, not because I'm <laughs> trying to sell you stuff, although I guess I am, kind of, but the reality is we do it cheaper than anywhere else you'll find, um, think, from the custom design service, you can have drawings as crude as, you know, pencil drawings that look like they were done by uh, somebody in a Charlie Brown cartoon. Um, you know, the designers can extrapolate from that as long as it's you're pretty clear on, on the concept that you want uh, and they have a good starting point, they can go from there or uh, the easiest way, obviously, like this gal, uh, if you have a pendant that we already have, um, then it's very easy to recreate that pendant with uh, different stone dimensions. Or easier, I guess. Uh, you know, the the labor is all the same because we still have to recreate the uh, digital files that make the three D version uh, that we would eventually email to you and say, "Is this okay? Do you like this? How does this work? Uh, is that all right? Do you want any changes to it?" Um, and then once it's approved, then we go ahead and you know print a three D version of it uh, in resin and then use that uh, for casting. Uh, so. Custom, please keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, you're not limited by, uh, and this is important, you know, for more for well for anybody obviously who's buying stones, but more for lapidaries who are cutting their own stones. Because when you're cutting your own stones, um, you know, you might start out with a, a template uh, for the basic shape. You know, if you're doing a pear or an oval or whatever, um, and the dimensions may be, uh, you know, fine, but you know, the width of the thickness of the Sharpie that you drew on the stone, and then as you're cutting it and you're, you're polishing it and filing the edges uh, um, or sanding or, you know, working on the lapidary wheel. I don't know what you call it, the technical term for it. Um, I've done it. It's not hard to do, but it's hard to do well, I've <laughs> discovered. Um, you may not end up with the uh, actual size and dimension that you started with, that you uh, think. So, um, you know, it's important to be able to get customizable uh, things, although most of our stuff, uh, we have pendants, uh, especially pendants, you know, and rings uh, in almost every calibrated shape. And I use the word calibrated in uh, quotations because, um, you know, to me, calibrated means that... Uh, uh, the X dimension and the Y dimension are, uh, you know, normal, not like, uh, you know, 13.7 millimeters by, you know, 22.9. That's a really big, you know, long oval. That's not a usual uh, thing. But we can make something with that. You know, we can work with it. Um, anyway, that's neither here nor there. Uh, 
as far as uh, shipping, I always do this in every um, uh, live stream, and I'm not uh, today's no different. I'm going to talk a little bit about the state of shipping and how it's going. Um, it seems like uh, Canada, you know, we're getting that backlog. Um, Unbacklogged, <laughs> unlogged, uh, is actually getting a little bit better. Uh, we were looking at things like two weeks shipping from here to say Ontario back east, and now you know it's more like seven to ten days. You know, so it's still longer than it should be, but it's is not as bad as it was um, in the height of the pandemic. Uh, into the states, it was always awesome, even when it was really terrible down there. I guess it's still really terrible pandemic-wise down there, um, but. U.S. Postal Service was, you know, awesome, uh, typically, because they've always been uh, really good. Um, you know, they ship everywhere to every little corner of the country. There's nowhere that, you know, they can't go. You know, if you ship, if you live in a rural area and you ship by UPS or FedEx, it's probably not a UPS or a FedEx truck that's going to bring it to you at the last thing. They always, you know, count on the U.S. They'll bring it to the post office that's closest to you and then a U.S. Postal Service <laughs> truck will bring that to me. So the idea of sabotaging the U.S. Postal Service is just crazy to me, but I'm not going to get into that. Uh, there's neither here nor there, but um, slowdowns are happening uh, into the States, and I've noticed this with a lot of our uh, Etsy orders where we ship one or two things. Um, you know, the packages are small. Uh, you know, uh, we have a reshipping agent uh, company, uh, I mean, they're all across Canada, but we have a, a branch here in Richmond. And uh, the service, what they do is uh, we print U.S. Postal Service labels here. We stick it to the box. We pay U.S. Postal Service, uh, you know, uh, postage. Uh, we bring it to them. They truck it across the border. And then they, you know, once they get to uh, from here, they bring it to Blaine, Washington, and uh, then it goes into a post uh, into the postal service there, and then it goes to wherever. So it's uh, it's almost like a, there's a day delay, but it's almost as if we're shipping, uh, you know, dropping directly into a U.S. postal service mailbox um, in Blaine. Uh, I want to make a joke about how there are fewer and fewer of those these days, but I, I'm not going to do it. I said I'm not going to do it, so I'm not going to do it. Uh, <laughs> uh, and that actually, you know, works out great. It's a great service for us. And, and uh, you know, shipments that are under, and I can never remember, it's either seven or $800 uh, U.S. Uh, the ship into the States uh, will be duty-free. You know, you don't have to pay duty on them. Uh, you know, more than that, you'll end up paying, you know, duty. Uh, you can always be sure of the shipping you know, being brought down to two or three days at the most. Uh, if you ship uh, with a premium service like DHL uh, that we have, uh, beware though when you ship with DHL, um, they have to, even if it's under $700, they have to clear it through customs. You know, the U.S. Postal Service doesn't, um, so they just handle the boxes as though they were shipped within uh, domestically. But uh, DHL have to clear the things through customs, so there's paperwork involved. Um, you're not going to have to pay duty or taxes or anything uh, uh, until your orders are $800 or more. Uh, but they are going to charge you a brokerage fee. Normally it's like $12 or $15. I'm not sure off the top of my head. So um, just beware of that. Um, uh, no surprises. Don't want any surprises. Uh, I think that's about it for the housekeeping, what I call housekeeping. Um I want to talk today about pearl settings, pearl findings, pearl uh, things. Uh, and when I say pearl, you know, the basic premise is this. Let me just uh, go down here and, you know, something like that, right? It's a lovely pendant. It's got a, a post. I don't know if you can see that in the middle. It's trying to focus. Maybe I should have got one that was a little bit easier to see. I don't know if that's easier to see, but you know, a pendant with a post in the middle, um, or a post somewhere on it. Uh, and the basic premise is, uh, you know, it's pretty simple. Uh, you get uh, pearls that um, are what they call half drilled, that have a hole drilled, you know, <laughs> halfway through it. Uh, so there's only one hole; doesn't go all the way through, like a bead. Um, 
and you know most of the pearls that you see in jewelry and rings and stuff like that are made like that they're half drilled um and you just glue uh, the pearls directly to the post and that's it that's all there is to it uh when you're gluing pearls to the post um you can buy a product called pearl cement which i guess works uh, pretty good i personally am partial to a good two-part epoxy um the kind that you can get a couple different kinds like there's one uh, i guess the most famous one is bondo where uh it mixes up but it's but it's gray and ugly it's super strong but it's really you know um you don't want to use that for jewelry uh there are brands out there that dry clear um and i don't have one to show you but it's just a you know a good two-part epoxy that dries clear um you mix up a little a little bit about the same amount of each you normally put like a little dab of each next to each other then mix it up and you've got um you know six or eight minutes uh that you can still work with it before it begins to get really dry and tacky um just get the glue on the the post sometimes the posts have little threads like screws that you can put the pearl on and screw the, the thing down um you always want to uh try it first to see how far down because most of the times uh the posts are going to be um longer than halfway uh point of the size of pearl that you would want to put in the setting if that makes sense so if the setting is designed for say a 12 millimeter pearl most of the time the post is going to be a little bit longer than six millimeters which is about halfway uh which if your pearl is uh drilled exactly halfway um you know it'll go on to the post but it may not go all the way down into the setting the way it should be um so just you know you're always going to double check to make sure that you can just snip a little bit off uh, you know a half millimeter or something off the end of the post to make sure that uh the post uh the pearl goes all the way down onto the post and fits all the way down into the into the setting um but really that's the only uh, you know important thing sometimes you may need to depending on uh uh who drilled the uh the hole the, the you know the half uh, hole um sometimes you may need to ream that out to make it a little bit bigger but not usually most of the time uh when they're drilling those half holes in them uh it's understood what you're using it for so it's like they're not making it smaller than you would need for uh a good sturdy post um and a good sturdy post is you know probably uh you know 0 0.6 0 0.8 millimeters so like 22 gauge 20 gauge probably 20 gauge is a good size post um, so they would use a drill bit. That's that. Oh, and one thing, um, if you're tempted to try to drill pearls yourself, um, don't. <laughs> uh, unless you have the right tools. There's a tool that you can buy. If you have a flex shaft, you know, that kind of a thing. Um, I have seen there's a really great tool you can buy, and they're not expensive. I think I saw that like 60 bucks or something. Uh, it's almost like a... A drill press, you know, a drill press, mechanical drill press, it has a handle that you pull down, and as you're pulling the handle, the drill press goes down into, you know, whatever. Um, it's a, you can set up your uh, flex shaft inside this tool um, that holds it perfectly, you know, level. Uh, there's kind of like a mini vise in the bottom of it that you can hold the pearl in, or the stone in, if you're, you know, doing stones. Um I'm just going to back up a minute. Uh, so as you're drilling straight through, the drill bit goes exactly straight through the, uh, you know, the stone of the pearl, uh, you know, and then straight back out. If you try to do it, uh, you know, by hand, holding onto it, no matter how secure you are, it's really difficult. Even the movement that your hand makes from your heartbeat is enough for the drill bit to get off perpendicular and the stone will just explode or crack or, or, or break. Or same thing with the pearl. Usually the knacker uh, cracks off the surface of it kind of thing. So um, uh, beware if you're tempted to try to half drill your own stones or pearls. Uh, bring it to somebody who knows what they're doing. Uh, you know, it'll cost you a little bit, uh, but probably won't cost you as much as it would be to replace the thing that you're going to break. Um, like I was saying before, all of these things, we call these pearl settings, but uh, I've seen lots of people use um, stones in here. You know, they've got a beautiful uh, moonstone uh, sphere uh, that, you know, half drilled thing put on there. Um, I've seen amethysts. I've seen, uh, I've seen some uh, faceted 
you know, round uh, stones um, that are half drilled that have been used. It's just gorgeous. Um, but we mostly call these pearls. So I'm going to, you know, talk about these uh, um, basically under the uh, auspices of pearl settings. But, uh, you know, once you buy it, you can use it for whatever you want. I don't care. Uh, oh, we have a customer who uses some of these uh, things. She snips the post right off, and then she fills the, you know, the cavity like this. And this is the one I, I picked to, to show you. Um, she cuts the post right off and fills the cavity with uh, uh, resin. And um, her company sells breast milk jewelry. <laughs> uh, people send her little vials of breast milk, and then she mixes it in this resin and use, makes rings. Uh, you know, she makes cabochons with them. Um, but she'll fill anything, you know, with resin sort of thing. And she's done one like that, which I thought was very cool. Very cool idea. I mean, the whole breast milk, milk thing is kind of yeesh to me. But, uh, you know, um, commemorative uh, jewelry. What do they call that? Uh, memorial you jewelry. Know, <laughs> memorial jewelry. I guess is a big thing. I never if, realized. Uh, if, uh, if uh, Opal. Yeah. Uh, we have a customer who's making... Um, which he's doing a bunch of custom stuff with us. But um, his basic, uh, you know, premise... Um, his whole company is he makes uh, memorial jewelry. You can send him some of your ashes of your dog or um, pet. Your, 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 you know, whatever pet, you know, I think, or I guess people too. Um, and he'll mix that with some crushed opal and resin and make cabochons out of it. They're kind of beautiful, actually. Um, and then set those into jewelry. Okay. Um, anyway, neither here nor there. You can do that with these kind of things. Actually, I, any of the ones that have, a, you know, a sealed back like this, you know, sealed belt, you can easily do that with. Uh, this one, uh, I just picked that first because it's one of my favorites. I don't know. I kind of like the uh, that classic, um, I don't know, almost Victorian-looking sort of um, design, motif, style. I'm so bad. I'm sure that people are like, what, Mark? That's blah, blah, blah. That's not Victorian. Uh, but, you know, give me a break. <laughs> uh, I know how things are made. I don't know what they're called. Uh, this one, MTP 651. Uh, the retail price is $24.80. And the wholesale... Oh, you know what? The price check. These are the not... Price. Yeah, I should probably... Uh... I'm not going to give prices for most of these things today. I'm just going to talk about them and the thing and stuff because... Um, I probably should have mentioned this way at the beginning at the, the housekeeping thing. Um, silver is not always a volatile market, but lately it has been. Um, just in the past two months, like literally the past two months, uh, the price of silver has uh, gone up uh, you know, about 50%. And that's not exaggeration. It's actually that. I think it was six months in the past six months because it was steady for a while but in the past six months it was like 62 percent uh, increase uh, so uh, so yes the prices of all the pendants and the rings and all those things and this it's actually reflected on the website already um but we haven't had time to uh <laughs> to remake all these labels so uh if you see any prices you'll see prices um, you can probably add uh, most of these pendants if you add about 30% uh, to them. We've only raised the prices 30% because, you know, labor is more or less the same. Um, but the price of the materials uh, obviously has increased, you know, by crazy amounts. Um, you know, I try to read uh, as much as I can about, uh, you know, the silver market or precious metals market to silver and gold. Um, and there's a lot of talk about how the ratio between the price of silver and gold uh, is wrong now. I don't know how much I believe in that tying gold and silver together as though they should always be exactly the same. Uh, you know, they, they do it by uh, multiples of uh, silver. Gold has to be, you know, 75 times the price of silver or whatever it is. Um, and I'm not sure that I buy that whole thing. I just, uh, I do feel that there's some... Uh, you know, obviously, 
commodities markets. Uh, I don't want to get too technical here in this live stream of jewelry uh, <laughs> supplies program here. Um, but commodities markets are all messed up a little bit because of the pandemic and uh, international trade and um, basically everybody, you know, coming home to roost. Um, and silver's just gone up. I, you know, that's the kind of the end result. We can talk about all day long about all the, uh, you know, the issues uh, around that and the reasons why. Um, but uh, I don't think, and I hate to even say this because you can never know. I don't think it's going to get a lot higher, but I do think it is going to get, you know, higher still. Um, I think we're okay. I don't know how much of a cushion Marble has uh, uh, put in with the, the silver prices, but I think we're okay if silver goes up a little bit uh, without raising the prices, you know, too much more. Anyway, so um, again, uh, forgive me. Uh, I'm not going to read out the prices because they're going to be wrong, and uh, I can't do the math in my head as quickly as I want to to be able to say 2480. Uh, the new price is um, $31, something like that, off the top of my head, but. Anyway, I'm not going to do it. Uh, but the prices that you see, just beware that the, the, those are about 30% less than, uh, than the new prices. And sorry, but that's just uh, the nature of the beast. Um, when you're making stuff out of precious metals, you always have to worry about that, that kind of stuff. Um, uh, I, you know, for years and years... Uh, taught workshops in jewelry fabrication and uh, it was always an issue you know we always had like a, a kit fee that you would have uh, you know 25 bucks or 35 bucks for the materials for the class on top of the class fee and uh, you know we would print brochures at the beginning of the quarter and you know by the time the end of the quarter came around if the price was you know so much higher you know nothing you can do you just have to go with it um, anyway neither here nor there uh, golly, I've gone 26 minutes already, <laughs> and I'm only on my first pendant. So this, I, I just love this um, uh, pendant. Uh, you can get pendants a bunch of different ways. I'm going to show you some of the more over-the-top ones. Just look at that. That's awesome. All right? That lovely kind of um, cubic zirconia um, I don't know if they're ribbons or thing what going around, um, but just imagine you know a pearl inside that uh, with the edges of the flower, you know around the outside of that uh, around the outside of the, the pearl. God, these things are just works of art. Um, here's another one that's kind of similar, um, but a lot more cubic zirconias. Just gorgeous, right? I mean, that that's a statement piece, right? That's a, no matter what size of a pearl you put in there, um, you know, somebody's eyes are going to be drawn to that and they're going to, you know, see that, that from a mile away. Um, yeah. Now, something like this, you can get away with a pearl as small as, like, uh, I don't know, six millimeters, kind of thing, all the way up to... You know, completely covering that uh, flower, you can get it probably, man, 14 millimeters, maybe 14, 16 millimeter pearl on there. Um, you know, and the uh, the the bottom of the peg that the post gets, uh, that the pearl gets uh, glued onto, is down on the bottom of that that uh, pendant. So uh, you don't have to worry about so much about uh, sometimes when you set pendants uh, and the stone is really heavy um, and you must have noticed this is just um, you know the nature of the beast. Uh, sometimes they lean forward a little bit you know kind of thing which it's fine when it's sitting you know straight against your chest but uh, if it's just dangling it leans forward a little bit I uh, think uh, and that alleviates that you know, quite a bit. Um, so we've got tons and tons, gosh, I think like seven trays, seven or eight trays of um, and these, uh, and there's like 24 um, pendants in a tray. So, oh, look at that. Oh. Right, a lovely Rococo, you know, um, 
uh, elements, you know, beautiful, um, what would you call that? Not really a teardrop. Um, it's not really a cat's eye either. The peach, whole shape of that peach thing. Shape. Peach, peach, yeah. peach, peach, okay, peach shape. Uh, who the cubic zirconias in there. You know, I'm a fan of that cubic zirconias. Um, and I just think they add tons of sparkle and uh, what I call credibility. I don't know why. I think so. um, there's a couple. Show you. This one is a classic, um, you know, clamshell, right? With that post on there. MTP027. Uh, I love this. I think this is uh, just, you know, perfect, uh, classic. And the only thing <laughs> that could be better than that is something more <laughs> with more bling on it. Because uh, if there's cubic zirconias, I love it. Uh, but it's also, it's articulated so that, the you know, the clamshell uh, opens up and the pearl on the inside. You know, I think this is just one of the most clever um you know, pendants we have, uh, you know, it's the kind of thing that, uh, I don't know, it's not always visible to everybody who looks at it, but the people you want to be able to look at it, <laughs> you know, you can. MTP697 is uh, the skew for that, and um, yeah, just, I'm a, I'm a big fan of things that are articulated a, a thing you know a lot more uh, labor involved in doing this thing uh, you know it's not just a function of you know casting it and calling it a day It'd be nice if I could actually see what I'm doing here um, but can you focus on that camera come on you can do it I just love that anyway clamshells we got from that, got some floral uh, ones. This is a really gorgeous, you know, very three-dimensional uh, uh, looking thing. These flat, you know, curly cues that make a, a flower. It's almost like something, um, I mean, I kind of like this because it's something that I would make, I would fabricate if I were doing it. I would, you know, it would take me, <laughs> you know, five or six hours to make it. Um, but it's one of those things that the more needlessly complex it is, um, and this is one of those things that if you're fabricating it, 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 it would, yeah, it would be needlessly complex to make this. Um, but we can cast this for you. It's already made with that lo lovely. I just love the three dimensionality of the, uh, you know, the petals on the edges. I don't know if you could see that. How, um, I don't know how cool that is. And that's, uh, you're looking, it's probably only around, uh, the new price, around 20 bucks. Uh, uh, if you're looking for <laughs> bling, uh, we got you covered. Again, this lovely kind of a twisted teardrop, you know, shape uh, with the pearl in the middle. The pave style uh, cubic zirconia is all the way around. Boy, you snap a pearl in that, that's like... That's like Tiffany jewelry, right? Um, so many of these um, pearl settings, and again, I'm going to call them pearl settings, but you could use them for stones or whatever, uh, again. Uh, but so many of these pearl settings are so, um, I don't know, elegant and classic. Um, and they kind of defy... Um, uh, I don't know, like, uh, they don't really have an age. It's not like, oh, yeah, that, that's like a good, you know, granny-looking uh, thing. You know, there's not really the one demographic that these uh, pendants will fit. You know, it's, uh, they're all, you know, contemporary and new, but they're also, you know, kind of classic. I love this um, peacock, I guess. It's a stylized peacock, a stylized bird. Um Phoenix, maybe? Uh, cubic zirconias and the tail feathers. Uh, God, I just love that. Uh, on that same kind of vein, that doesn't go there. We've got this uh, owl that, um, you know, if you've got a teardrop pearl, right, 
and you can put the big teardrop down on the bottom. You put the you know the pointy end up into the head, teardrop down to the bottom, and then these wings close over the pearl uh, to hold it in place. Um, again, uh, it doesn't have cubic zirconias, but it's got uh, lovely granulation texture. I think it's got some cubic zirconias for the eyeballs. Um, but that's just a stellar piece. Just gorgeous. So you've got your owl types out there. People love owls. People love all kinds of things. Uh, oh, code number. I haven't been given the code numbers. MTP296 is the code of that. I just love that. An owl. Uh, I have more animals. I think the new settings. There are some new ones. I was yeah. going to save those for the end, though. Uh, there's, there's there's a couple of new ones that are very cool. Uh, and um, where, oh, I think that's in the bales. Um, pendants, pendants. So these are all pendants, right? Uh, um, again, God, look at that. that gorgeous flower. All the cubic zirconias in there, in the uh, in the outside of the the petals, and then the little pistils. What are those? Is that the pistils? Is that what it's called? Um, I think obviously the post, longer than you need it to be, so you can snip it down so it's just the right size. Again, this you could probably put a pearl, uh, anything from six millimeters, probably all the way up to ten millimeters, uh, without too much. Uh, stress and uh, difficulty. That. Um, MTP 116 is the skew of that one. Just killer. Again, if you like that kind of thing, more classic you know, things. And I like this because it's, you know, um, it's got a basket, which normally you associate with, uh, you know, cut stones to make the uh, pavilion not be able to scratch into your chest. Uh, on this one, which, again, is just a gorgeous, you know, shape. Uh, I love those, you know, curly Q elements, a little bit uh, almost Rococo sort of elements. Um, uh, this is so that the setting for the pearl can sit all the way down on the bottom of it. Um, so it's almost like... Uh, It'll almost be kind of like a hemispherical look to it, to the outside of it. So it's almost like a, you know, ball. instead of, you know, a lot of these, the pearl is so forward that it's obviously a pearl. Whereas something like this, the, the stone of the pearl, uh, uh, you know, maybe sitting a little bit further down uh, in the setting. So it's not as visible. So if you have a pearl way, maybe where they uh, weren't uh, as careful drilling the holes, uh, and there's a little bit of damage where the drill bit goes into the stone or the pearl. Um, you know, a setting like this is ideal for that kind of thing because it'll totally hide that, um, you know, that damage. We've got some very cool, much more simple, but the same idea. You know how the pearls sit very deep. Uh, you know, down inside there. That MTP460. Uh, no cubic zirconias in this one. But it's just a lovely... Uh, golly, I know it's kind of a floral, you know, thing. And that uh, five-petal flower like that is a... I can't remember the name of it. But you see it a lot on flags. Which is weird. It's neither here nor there. Here's another lovely uh, leafy inspired thing, right? Uh, very cool texture on the leaves. There's a cubic zirconia there on the stem. Uh, a little pearl on that. Probably uh, uh, eight millimeters would be perfect for this, but you could definitely get away with something smaller, like a six millimeter, or maybe even a little bit bigger, ten millimeter. You have to be careful uh, um, that the the edge of the pearl doesn't sit too far up from the base of the setting, because uh, you know the more contact the 
Pearl has with the post inside the hole, you know, the better, obviously. Uh, uh, there's just so many. I'm not going to go too uh, much further with the, the pendants here, but there's just so many. Literally hundreds. Um, I think it's okay. uh, MTP 187. Gorgeous. Um, very three-dimensional floral. Um, I don't know curly wavy tech uh, motif thing the thing i like a lot about these pearl settings um that you don't see a lot in the pendant settings is the three-dimensionality you know like uh, in most of the pendant settings they're designed to be more or less uh flat ish um and they allow the stone um, whether it's a cabochon or a cut stone to, uh, you know, be the star of the show. Uh, on these pendants, you know, because pearls are kind of obvious, you know, they're, they're you know, pearl is a pearl. There's lots of different, uh, you know, shapes, you know, rounds, baroque pearls, uh, whatever, and lots of different finishes. You know, you've got that lovely uh, um, dark oil slick looking uh, sort of Tahitian, you know, pearls, uh, all, all so many different uh uh, shades of cream and white and uh, you get different uh, irradiated pearls and all kinds of crazy colors and greens and uh, reds and yellows so all kinds of stuff um, but the pearl is a pearl right it's not a uh, you know, thing and these settings um, definitely showcase the pearl but they're you know works of art in themselves it doesn't really matter if you put the most plain pearl imaginable in there uh, They'll still jump out. Uh, as a, uh, rings, rings. Oh my gosh! Uh, golly, I'm already 41 minutes in, so I'm not gonna. Uh, I think I might pull one or two of these rings out. But look at these rings. Let me get way back here. Uh, so many rings, so many pearls, any rings. Oh my gosh! Don't know where to start. I'm just gonna. Oh, here, that very first pendant that I showed you, right? Here's, like, it's an identical setting, but it's in a, it's in a ring, you know? So, golly, that would be good as a set. Make a pendant and a ring. <laughs> or uh, a wedding jewelry. Can I focus that? I just love that. I think that's one of my favorite uh, patterns. That The code number of this is... MTR319. Um, and off the top of my head, I'm not sure what sizes it comes into, but probably something like, uh, you know, six, seven, eight, nine. Being all the sizes it comes in. Here's one with a uh, gorgeous flower, lots of uh, CZ baguettes that are um, set into those. Into the petals of that thing, and that God, look at that! You could stick a huge pearl in there. That you, oh man, eighteen millimeters maybe, <clears throat> fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, something big like that. Giant. Uh, MTR three six zero is the the code number for that one. Get one or two more. This one, right. This is great. Ooh, it's, it's bent. Doink, doink, make it straight. Uh, so this gorgeous uh, uh, setting, the edges of that, right, these edges, um, theoretically, you could probably push those in a millimeter or two to adjust the setting for the size of your pearl. But uh, again, this for a pretty good size pearl, you're looking, uh, boy, probably... Uh, Minimum 10 millimeters all the way up to 14 or 16 millimeters, right? Just a classic uh, one. The edges, um, you know, uh, of the, 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 the shoulder here, um, you know, they'll help uh, keep the pearl, you know, from <laughs> jumping off, getting busted off. Here's that gorgeous little delicate you know, thing with a, you know, it's a cute little band. I don't know if it's not going to be able to focus on this. Uh, cute little band with a bunch of cubic zirconias 
and some other sort of uh, granulation effects uh, on the edges. Um, with the seat at the top, boy, put a four millimeter, maybe a six millimeter pearl on there. That could be like a, an alternate engagement ring, sort of thing, very easily. Uh, although you'd probably get in trouble for it not being in gold, <laughs> depending on your girlfriend uh, or boyfriend. MTR 123. I don't see many men wearing pearl rings or pearl things. I'm going to show you one or two more that are just over the top, like this. <laughs> look, look at all the cubic zirconias in there. That's uh, like practically a Liberace you know, ring. Um, but I can imagine a great big pearl in there, being like 12, 14 millimeter uh, pearl in there. Um, this is, uh, I always used to <laughs> say, not the kind of thing that you wear to the grocery store. Although, well, these days, I don't know why you wouldn't. Um, definitely. That's uh, for an evening out at the uh, the opera. Um, MTR327 is the code for that. So go look that up. Uh, the new prices are all up on the website. Um, and I'm just going to end my little thing about the rings with this, which I think is just one of my favorite uh, rings, which is weird because it's not, uh, there's no cubic zirconias. It's just a lovely, very three-dimensional um, flower, uh, right, with that pearl down on the bottom. Probably a four millimeter, six millimeter pearl maybe uh, down on the bottom uh, of that. So classic, so gorgeous. And again, that man, there's not like an age, um, you know, that you look at that and think, well, they, yeah, that's a grandma ring or or that's a little girl's ring. You know, I mean, not anybody could wear that. I probably wouldn't wear it uh, <laughs> because I don't have any rings. Uh, MTR 088 is your code number for that. Just love that. That's the kind of thing that I would, you know, fabricate if I were sitting down and just making stuff. Uh, figure out how to do those uh, twists. And that, uh, again, that's an... Oh, maybe one more. <laughs> uh, this MTR318. Couldn't get out without going for the cubic zirconias. That lovely spiral uh, shape. Again, very three-dimensional, um, you know... Uh, Definitely showcasing the pearl in the middle uh, with some just incredible bling on that. Uh, boy. Our designers are not kidding. They're awesome. Um, now, as far as um, other things, bales, you know, whatnot, um, pearl setting, of course, you're not just limited to uh, um, setting them on a pendant or a ring um, you might just want to uh, instead of having you know a big um, showcase pendant like the ones that I've showed you I uh, think and I tend to be uh, uh, <laughs> I tend to like a lot more of the you know the bigger crazier things um, but we've got a, a you know a bunch of um, in the bales section of our uh, uh, catalog uh, we have a bunch of settings for pearls mm -hmm. right just like a plain classic um bale with a cap on there and a cup uh cup and peg setting right it's a classic male that lj3 934 um you have other ones right lovely classic you know uh bead cap with that post on there Right, for gluing. MTP668 is the code number of that. And you know, I'm not going to go too far into this, but we've got tons and tons of these kind of uh, bales. Let me show you that, right? Look at that. Oh, that's gorgeous. Uh, with the lovely flourish bale and that big uh, cap. Gorgeous cap. And the, you know, the peg inside. I don't know if you can see the peg inside there. Um, MTP723 is the code of that. This, um, you know, probably uh, for like a, 
a teardrop pearl or uh, depending on the shape you know some baroque pearls you might be able to uh, drill lengthwise or you know, drill through the top and and uh, you know glue that into there but I mean that's instant pendant right um, it can't go too far <laughs> without looking for more bling these uh, you know kind of like a stepped um, a layer cake kind of I guess <laughs> sort of effect um, or like a stacking rondelle I think is probably more appropriate it doesn't really look like a layer cake, layer cake. Um, but you know the cubic zirconia is all the way around that cap uh, with a lovely uh, you know simple bale with the cubic zirconias in the top of that and the cup and peg LJ653 is the code number for that um, I just love how instantly awesome anything is you know you can get a pearl that's kind of ugly uh you stick it onto one of these things and boom it's instant it's it's uh you know gorgeous here's a, a very cool uh it's a tube right so it's a tube bead right you'd string uh, whatever through that uh and there's that cup and peg uh, thing soldered to the bottom of that lj278 is the code number for that um boy i can think of a tons of ways to use that uh, again, always has you know the centerpiece. Um, you could probably use it somewhere on the side. It would look weird, but who am I to judge? <laughs> I always like to tell people, you know, once you buy it, I don't care what you do with it. Um, and then we've got a couple of uh, different sizes of these, uh, different you know size permutations of things. These it's just a simple uh, bale with a loop. And a little tiny cup and peg, you know, to string that on there. So something like this is obviously where, uh, you know, you just want to showcase the pearl uh, or the stone. It's like, you know, you know there's no uh, pretense. There's no bling. There's no thing. It's like, look at my pearl. This is what you're looking at. Um, uh, I think LJ916 is that. And you, I mean, obviously you can look these up. We've got a bunch of uh, other ones. Here's a... A little bit tinier one, LJ950. Uh, and this one, I don't know why customers like this a lot more. Uh, I think maybe because the uh, the bale is a little more domed, um, and the other ones, the bales are, are flat. But you know, we sell tons of those. Um, here's one. I'm going to actually pull one out of the bag and show you. Because I'm going to start with it open, right? So this is a, a bale um, for uh, I don't know, necklace enhancer, necklace things, uh, with a cup and a peg, you know, on the bottom of that as a dangle, right? So again, it's mostly showcasing the pearl or the stone or thing, whatever you put on there. Um, but if you have a you know a necklace that's endless, you can easily take this off, and snap that on. Put that on, Ooh, snap that closed, doink, and there you go. And easily remove it and put it on something else if you want. So you never have to go anywhere without your pearl. Um, got a couple of other... Oh, this one. This one is great. I love this. Nice, big, gorgeous bale. That, you know, and that that's a really wide bale. You could put... Uh, I don't think there's any chain we sell, or maybe one or two, but you know, probably gosh, six millimeters uh, the size of that bale. Um, so if you've got some, you know, super heavy cord or something, you can you know definitely use one of those on, on there. LJ nine nine zero is the code number of that. Uh, wrong. Here's another cap, sort of thing, right? Oh, sort of a snowflake, you know, uh, cap. Uh, with the cup and peg on there, cubic zirconia is all the way through there. LJ988 is the skew of that. Um, and then oh, it's just, you know, obviously so many others of these kind of things. Here's a great big tube bale, um, right? It has cubic zirconia all the way around the middle. And then those uh, S um elements all the way around the sides. I don't know if you can see that. You probably can't see that. It's not going to focus. Uh, I think that's as close as I can get. Uh, LJ996 is the skew of that. 
you know, and that's also just really versatile. Um, here's another one where the I'll just leave it on the card uh, where the the element itself is the bale, right? You can string whatever through that. Uh, that's a horseshoe with the uh, cubic zirconias going all the way around. And again, the horseshoe, right? The little dangles, cup and peg. The horseshoe is facing the right way, the correct way. <laughs> because if the horseshoe is facing upside down, right, then all the luck runs out, right? That's why you always see that whenever you see horseshoes hanging over a door or something in a saloon, the, the you know, the, the tongs, uh, the prongs uh, are always pointing up. Uh, so it keeps the luck inside. I don't make up these stories. These are just, these are just, uh, uh, okay. Oh, uh, yeah, I just, here's one that, uh, uh, it's pretty recent. I think it was, uh, one of the, the, maybe the, the penultimate, um, uh, shipment that we got in, uh, lovely little butterfly, uh, bale with a bunch of cubic zirconias in there. Um, you know, different colors, some kind of a, you know, ruby, some emeralds uh, looking, you know, stones. Just gorgeous, gorgeous. 55 minutes in. Um, I don't know, I'm skipping along. Uh, maybe too quick. Uh, oh. well, I did want to show you this. <laughs> This one, we've got a, a setting that, uh, the, uh, um, a pendant that at the bottom of this, there's a, you know, a, a seat and prongs for a 10 millimeter uh, cabochon. But um, I just love this. Uh, and I'm going to get in trouble again. Call it the wrong kind of a cat. Panther? Cougar? Not a cougar. It's panther to me. Green eyes. Um Right, those emeralds and the cubic zirconias all the way around. That's you know that pave style. Just <laughs> I just love that. The crazier the better, I think. When it comes to those kind of things, um, earrings. I'm just gonna back this up again so you can see. Oh, we have so many, so many earrings. <laughs> and I'm just gonna show you a couple of representative samples because I. Uh, um, I'm getting close to the hour, <laughs> quote unquote, time limit. Um, this, I just love this, right? So here's the, you know, your post, you know, for cut to whatever size. Um, and then here's, a, you know, just a simple ish kind of ear wire that, will it focus? Focus? No. Um, that could, it almost looks like a, you know, like a musical note, you know. Um, but big ear wires are in. That's like a fashion thing. And having said that, oh, somebody else, I'll talk about that later, uh, wanted to know about hoops, hoops, hoops. Uh, right, so... Ear wire with a lovely heart and that thing dangling in the middle with a little cup and peg. Um, <laughs> it's hard to make this stand straight, so it doesn't look crooked. Uh, but you know, uh, imagine just to stick a you know a pearl in there, and that well, you can't go wrong. Love that one. Um, same as the pendants. You know, we've got lots of you know these kind of blingy. Sort of, you can't go wrong with the cubic zirconias. Um, that's a good, probably 10, 12 millimeter pearl in there. Um, if you've got a pair, that ES104, I didn't give the SKU numbers for the other ones. That's okay. Look them up. There's so many. Uh, love those snowflakes with all the cubic zirconias in there. Maybe I should open that up and you'll see better. Can you see that better? Uh, these posts, um, you know, dangle a little pearl or a stone on the bottom of that. It's just instant credibility. Um, especially if you're me and uh, or if you're like me and you like that, you know, that bling, you know, kind of thing. It's a, 
another kind of variation on that same thing, only with uh, uh, diamond shaped or triangle, or not triangles, but uh, rhombus uh, shapes with some other little components in the bottom of that to dangle off. Again, these are posts. Um, here's a, another ear wire. This is always kind of tricky to show you because of the angle of this, but right, so the front, after the part that goes in your ear, the cap has all kinds of uh, cubic zirconias in there, and the back is nice and smooth. Um, pearl, probably um, six millimeter pearl would be perfect in there, six millimeter stone. That one is EW674, eight millimeter it says. Um, how about another big, you know, kidney wire um, shape thing, right? So this is a, the ear wire um, that goes in, and then the pearl just stuck to the bottom of that. So this, um, you know, would present itself, you know, the ears all the way up here. So it's got, uh, it's kind of like a dangle, but not uh, uh, a dangle that moves a lot. Um, just almost post-industrial, very gorgeous. We've got dangles with, uh, you know, chains, right? So that, um, uh, I don't know what you'd call that shape at the top, kind of like a big long oval. Um, there's a post in there that goes through your ear, and then you know, a uh, little length of chain, maybe uh, I don't know, half an inch, three quarters of an inch. Um, ES112 is your total on that. Um, okay. Now, this um, just on its own is one of my favorite ear wires, uh, right? So that great big gorgeous ear wire um, with uh, uh, just a little component with a cubic zirconia in there and then a cap with a cup and peg on that. Um, this is just so uh, classic. I don't know how else to call it, right? The ear wire, um, you know, presents itself something like this, right? Where that, all of that comes out of the edge of your ear, you know, hangs down. I don't know, I'm just a big fan of big ear wires. Always have been. Uh, right, here's another kind of interesting version of that. Right, nice big ear wire. Or, how about that? <laughs> right, so that tucks under the ear, right, like this, and then the pearl or thing just hangs from the bottom of that. So, um, you know, you'd see all this, you know, coming out the back, but out the front is just a very cool. A swoopy shape, um, and this might even uh, ultimately tuck under the earlobe. I guess depending on how um, far away from the edge of your earlobe the hole is. Um, here's one that's a variation on that ring that I love so much. A very three-dimensional uh, thing. It's probably almost exactly the same component, only shrunk down a little bit and uh, used as earrings. Instead of right, another one with a just a very simple flower, you know, three-dimensional flower uh, looking thing. Run over. Um, here. here, here. Oh, oh. Right. Totally missed these. And these are. Um, bracelets, component bracelets. I don't know if you can see that. So there's this kind of uh, S component with a very cool thing. And then there's a, a flower uh, post with that. So it's uh, almost like a, you know, tennis bracelet kind of concept. Um, uh, only you can set uh, one, two, three, four, five, five uh, pearls in there or stones in there. You can see those. Um, that's very cool. Uh, CF 
zero one one is the skew of that. Um, the nice thing about these is that you know they're self-contained. You know, obviously the cost is already done, uh, and then you've got this um, length of chain. So when you string your clasp on there, you can string it onto any of these loops. Uh, it's totally adjustable. Um, so you can get a you can have a bracelet that's you know anywhere from six inches long all the way up to nine inches long, depending on the size of your wrist. Here's another one, same idea. These lovely uh, butterflies, um, right? Stylized kind of butterflies with these cup and pegs in between, um, and uh, the links. Near the end, so their hearts look at how cute that is. Oh my god! And the same idea with, with that, uh, you know, a couple of inches of extender chain, so you can have that, um, you know, be whatever length you like. CF014 is your total, and, uh, and I bet most people don't even know that we have these bracelets. Um, we don't really show them at shows, uh, but I can remember seeing them, you know, there. Um, but they're here in, in the uh, in the showroom. Um, oh, the last thing I'm going to show you, uh, these are like brand new, literally just pulled out of the box and, you know, uh, 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 I just love this fox uh, pendant, right, with all the cubic zirconias on the, on the thing and the little uh, uh, cup and peg, right, with the tail wrapped around. MTP1266 is your... Uh, code for that uh, and you could probably put uh, anywhere from a four millimeter to maybe a six millimeter you could get a six millimeter in there uh, uh, that size of the mounting is five millimeters wide so you could definitely get away with uh, like a millimeter smaller or a little millimeter bigger uh, but again very three-dimensional um, just love those things and um, Oh, I'm going to save that one for last because that one was my favorite. Um, this is a bumblebee pendant, right, where the cup and peg is the head and the eyeballs in front of it. Uh, thing again, just, just string a pearl or uh, glue a pearl into there, and you're all set. Love that. Um, here's another one, much a little more blingy. Uh, MTP1268. I didn't give the skew of the other ones. Sorry. Uh, uh, again, uh, blingy, very teardroppy, but uh, I don't know. You can string a pearl in there. And then my favorite of the, the new ones is this. I love this little dragon um, pendant with that flower peg, cup and peg in there, right? Um, and you could put, I don't know, anything, probably six millimeter up to, um, golly, you could probably even put a 10 millimeter in there. Uh, again, the setting is designed for eight millimeter, but um, it's not super deep, so you could probably get away with a millimeter or two at either side of that. Um, and I just love that. Probably, I don't know why, I'm a sucker for dragons. Um, and that's... Uh, so, um, that, I'm going to stop uh, here, kind of. Uh, I've only gone seven minutes over this time. I'm getting better. At least we're not 20 minutes over. Although uh, I haven't ended yet. Uh, it's ending takes me a while. Uh, so we might uh, be a little bit uh, more over, uh, but not too much. Um, next week, uh, we're going to showcase some... Uh, um, Charms and connectors, maybe both. Definitely charms. If we have time, we'll do connectors. But again, I tend to go on and on. Um, and, you know, when uh, we say charms, we're talking about anything, you know, as simple as this lovely little, you know, lotus blossom, you know, charm. Just, you know, very cute, very, uh, I don't know, usual every day, all the way up to something you know crazy like this this guy I, love this. I just love how he's articulated oh that makes me so happy don't ask me why i don't know why uh i just love this that's one of my favorite uh pieces that we've ever made um 
But uh, again, that's next week, uh, next Wednesday from 10.30 a.m. till um, hopefully not too much uh, longer than an hour. If you have stayed here the whole time, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, I know there's a lot of stuff to look at. And, um, you know, uh, just look in the... You know, in the menu section of the website, uh, Pearl Settings, under Settings, um, and go from there. Obviously, there's a lot more than what I showcase today. Um, and some of what I showcase may not be your taste, but I guarantee you, uh, if you're looking for a setting for a Pearl, uh, we do have something that is in your taste. Um, so, uh, until next week, thanks for watching. Um, again, please share the video uh, if you like, and we'll send you one of these polishing cloths. And we will see you next week, the Sylvia Findings live stream Wednesday morning thing, event thing. <laughs> okay, thanks. Good morning. Good night. Bye. We're done. We're out. Yeah.